our phrasal verbs, your Everest. Vicki Kelty here with another fluency tip to help keep your English speaking seriously fun and make phrasal verbs a more positive part of your life. Maybe I'll try. So phrasal verbs. Uh, I, I don't know why people hate on them so much. I, I think, I don't know. I like them and I want to help you to like them too. So phrasal verbs are, they're just verbs. They're just verbs trying to communicate information in a conversation. And we don't need to give them this extra special level of difficulty. We just need to understand them and then use them according to that understanding that we found. And I'm not maybe going to tell you what, what you expected that I might, I'm not going to sit here and say a bunch of phrasal verbs. And this one means this, and this other one means this. I'm going to just ask you to do that research for yourself. And the reason being that I think that that is a way that you can be really involved with taking action to become closer, to have a more intimate relationship with your phrasal verbs. (laughs) I'm laughing because that was a really silly thing to say. So what I mean is I want you, I'm going to put a link to the Cambridge dictionary because it's one of my favorites and the online version. And I want you to take a look at some different phrasal verbs. Maybe some that you have said in the past are frustrating or difficult, hard to understand, uh, phrasal verbs that you personally have felt like they've been giving you a little bit of trouble. And I want you to go look in a dictionary and read the definition for that phrasal verb. And I want you to use it in a sentence. I know I don't ask for much. I also want, okay, sorry. I guess I do ask for a little more than that. I also want you to see if you can find a, let's say synonym verb. It's little, it's, it's pair because a lot of times our phrasal verbs, they have a (laughs) phrasal verb is like the, even though they're, I guess the, it's real. I was going to say the like, um, dressed up verb, but really since phrasal verbs tend to be informal, it's more like the, um, the, the cool relative or the, um, dressed down the casual, casual Friday, casual Sunday, whatever verb of the family. So where the, the regular verb is dressed to the nines, ready to go out and parte at the wedding or what have you in a very fancy occasion the phrasal verb is wearing the sweatpants and <laughs> lounging around on the sofa, right? So I want you to have some pairs that you can can put together so that when you think of this phrasal verb that you want to, to use more because you're excited to get to use phrasal verbs because you've decided that they're your friends. Remember, you like them. Start off with that attitude and it, it will definitely help, I promise. That's that's what I'm telling myself about the subjunctive in Spanish. I'm like, it's my friend. We're buddies. We we get along really well. We do. This is what I tell myself. So this is what you're going to tell yourself. And yeah, find those pairs. Find that the wedding version and the um, sweatpants version of the verb. Okay. So find those pairs and tell me what I like to give you a little challenge for the comments. Tell me what is a phrasal verb that 
in the past you have said is giving you a hard time and share what is the regular verb, the fancy verb, the dressed up verb that goes with it and share a definition and your own sentence. And that can be your first start at creating a a nice bond with phrasal verbs, a good friendship. Okay. Your friendship starts today with phrasal verbs. So not your typical phrasal verbs lesson, but (laughs) don't even consider this a lesson so much as top tip for you to bring joy to your phrasal verb learning. All right. Go take some action, my friend. See ya.